the same, be mm -hmm. on the same page at the same time on the same day. And it worked. I would like to say also with Phil and Tressa both, they're open to our interpretation. Right. They don't mm -hmm. stick to the script mm -hmm. letter by letter. Mm -hmm. they, we say, say, what do you think of this idea? What do you think of that idea? Yeah. yeah. Tressa has the ultimate say, and she'll say, mm -hmm. she'll say, luckily she'll say no, because sometimes right. it no needs to be said. But she's open to just, she'll listen to anything, and so will Phil. And Phil will try a couple different versions. Phil will try the script version and mm -hmm. our version. Mm -hmm. So. It's nice to have the writer with you when you do the right. filming. Because there are key things in her mind that she wrote that story for, right. and Tressa will point out, no, the, the phone has got to be on the thing, mm -hmm. and then the phone's going to be disappeared. There, I know I, uh, you see a shot where uh, the phone's on the table in the kitchen, and then it's there, not there when she comes out of, out of the uh, shower. Or, and she's uh, she's ready to go, and mm -hmm. matching your frames. Yeah, matching. Uh, and it, she says you can change a little bit of the words and stuff, but that phone's got to be missing. Mm -hmm. So we're 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 a hell of a team. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can can we come back and do something else, Mom? <laughs> yeah, what's the next one, Tress? Well, we will be doing more soon. That's that's. <laughs> Hey everybody, Tressa again. I'm going to be releasing a video a week explaining why I decided to do a movie called Sociopath. Can you imagine living through your own horror film, your own horror novel? Well, that's what I've done for the past four years and still doing. I don't know how I ended up finding the courage to fight through all this, but I ended up putting my story on on the screen for people to watch. You can go to my website at www.tristagraves.com and I will post the link to my website and the link to IMDb in the description of this video. If you know anyone who has been stalked or is being stalked, you might want to share these series of videos with them. Some of the stuff gets uncomfortable, some of it's hard to talk about some of it's hard to listen to so over the next couple of weeks follow me on my journey of being stalked once my court case is done i'll be releasing my first non-fiction novel called the stalking of tressa gray's the monster of melbourne W W W finished the movie and uh, we finished the movie we finished it a day early too um, everything went so good there were very few second takes mm -hmm. a lot of this was was uh, pre plan uh, was a uh, talk for for an hour maybe in two hours and then shoot for a 30 second sh shot mm -hmm. And yeah, I like I like how you know you would go over all of it because like I would read the lines, I knew the lines, and then when it was my turn, I'm like, oh, I don't remember the lines, even though <laughs> going over it beforehand, you know, with you and obviously with mm -hmm. you, it was just it made it so so easy and everything just kind of flowed natural, you know, mm -hmm. all the feelings, all the emotions, all of everything, and you were prepared mentally and physically, right. you knew what to expect. So. Yeah. And well, I let's worked. introduce our actors too, though. Oh, yes. yes we yes. don't know who. First, to star of the show, Ashley Foster. This is Ashley's your first feature film, or first, first main role. Main role. Yep. She, she, I. She, I. She, I. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> no, she's really good. 
and See, next our main, our day. Day. Kids. next our our main day. villain our main villain um no spoilers no spoilers i am not a villain oh. I, I am not a villain i am pizza delivery boy <laughs> Right. Here's your pepperoni. Um, <laughs> never mind. I'm going to um, up again. <laughs> but I, I, I swear that um, there's Oscar performances done by here. Um, Oscar Meyer. Oscar Meyer performances. performances. Yeah. Pepperidge Farm. Getting back in the wiener trap. <laughs> Mike Ankrell also. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> first question, first question I have is what what do you think of all of this? This this production, Ashley? Well, <laughs> I knew the main reason behind the story when I came into it right off the bat. And so it it, it hit home for me personally. And, sure. Um, this has been a cross between super therapeutic and super kind of messed up but it it makes sense in order to get almost, through that almost misogynistic is it um a little bit it's almost like you know reliving it it really does take you back to those terrible horrible moments that really do happen and they do exist and these you know stances of what could happen and what does happen out there you know and just the fact that you know my, my girl over there, she would, she's trying to raise awareness to a bigger cause. You know, she wants people to be aware of domestic violence and that, you know, how, just stalking. how insane stalking, stalking yeah. and, you know, even it can lead to murder. It can lead to everything. It becomes obsessive and it's not fair because it takes away our lives. This does not mm -hmm. have happy endings for all the cast members. No. Um, the, that, and that's not a spoiler. Not everybody mm -hmm. um, has a happy ending in this, and because there's not a happy ending in domestic violence, somebody mm -hmm. is hurt, somebody's a victim, somebody's a perpetrator, and uh, sometimes that changes. Some, uh, and you never know. But a domestic violence is not, and and stalking, stalking. especially mm -hmm. stalking, is just. Taking it to the next step and yeah. it, it instills a fear in you that you can't come back from. When mm -hmm. when we did these scenes that were very, very bringing back memories and everything, we would rehearse them beforehand, and uh, we were all. This is me doing this. So she, uh, so Ashley, you knew it was Gary and Mike. Okay. We're doing this, and they're there for if I stay, mm -hmm. if you say stop, we stop, you know. And so everybody, there was there was a time when when uh, you were hugging Gary, yeah, over there, mm -hmm. and there was a time when Mike was comforting Tressa, and. Uh, you know, it felt so real. It, like I said, it hit yeah. so close to home. And even even though you you are mentally and emotionally and physically prepared, you know what's going to happen. It's still somewhere in your mind. It clicks and it takes you back to you know when your eyes close, even for that quick second, or if they roll in the back of your head, you get these flashbacks of oh, this. Mm -hmm. This really happened to you. I do have a question. Um, originally, I was told, I don't know, at least two weeks ago or a week ago or something like that. that you were not going to be told what was going to happen to you. What time, uh, What point in time, Philip, did, did that change? When I sent her the script. <laughs> <laughs> we, I only met but her. Tressa <laughs> wanted you to have real emotions. Did, uh, and she did. Yeah. They were real. Mm -hmm. um, Tressa saw, um, I think I think she actually could feel the emotions a little bit deeper than most in the room could. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was prepared for what was going to happen, but even so, you know, just just even the thought of being restrained or being touched or being mm -hmm. that that fear that you Thrown get around. Yeah. anything really it it, it it brings you to those the realness of that emotion and I think mm -hmm. you know Tressa watched that herself when we were going through the mm -hmm. climax of the story. I don't it know was if hard you at the end at the mm -hmm. one 
that at, at one mm-hmm. of the major scenes it was hard and you know what made it even harder is like behind the scenes i know that it was hard for them as well right. to even act that out mm-hmm. and so it just all together you know it, it could, couldn't have gone down with a better crew i know that i don't know if you remember ashley when i found out that you had signed on to the project one of the first things i did was i friended you on facebook yes. michael and set up private Michael. message to talk about the project and to assure you that everything was going to be safe yes. because to me emotionally physically your safety was my primary job even apart from portraying the character I had to make sure that you felt safe and it was just pretend and even even that small act of just reaching out you know that 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 shows such great character all in who you are as a person when you're you know not on screen when you're not mm-hmm. taking up these roles when you're you know trying to trying to meet new people is very hard these days and mm-hmm. then there's a lot of ulterior motives and there are a lot of freaking cycles out there mm-hmm. quick and, thing um, um, um michael can you move over a little bit and actually can you move over yeah. a t- tiny bit just tighten it up a tiny bit. Sure. Okay. Okay. My next question is to first, I guess, Michael, because he's uh, such the talkative one. Yeah. Um, have he's you like ever? Steven. Yeah. Have you ever done anything as intense as what happened here this weekend? Well, so this is what I wanted to say. Um, this is my third project with Tressa Graves Productions. And they were all intense in their own way. And if you start with good writing, and Tressa does good writing, if you start with a good story and good writing, you can make it happen if you're worth anything as an actor. Because the story is the, is the whole thing. So, to answer your specific question, yeah, all of them were intense in their own way, all three projects. But, uh... This one was a different intense thing. This was, this was, yeah, this one bothered me before I did it. I apologize. The first time I met Ashley, I said, I'm sorry. You know, because I, it, it, it bothered me to say any of the words we had to say. And I found myself coaxing you, like, just remember, you know, this this is a real life thing. This really yep. did happen. Yep. And so as hard as it is for us, like, this actually happened to somebody in real life. Exactly. And so if you, can, if you can, you know, even the simple act of acting it out, it brings awareness to a broader spectrum. Do that. Do yep. that. Make a change. Yep. Start something. And now I guess uh, Gary, the same question. Mm. Uh, what was the question again? How, uh, oh, is intensity. this the most intense? Um, How does this rank on intensity? I guess I'd go along with Mike on that one in that it is a totally different intense. It's something that... You have your own theater. In your I have my own room. theater. I've been acting for over 40 years now um, since I was just a little bitty buckaroo. <laughs> and... Uh, Little bit so of, I've, I've done a little lot bit of, of different roles. A little um, bit Irish lad? Yeah. Oh, I shut up. Just a wee lad. Um, <laughs> just a wee Irish lad. Um, I think the most intense overall role I ever did was when I was in Spring Awakening. Um, it's a stage musical. And I played the father of a boy who died. And standing there at his funeral and thinking back on my own experience because my own son passed away um it'll be 10 years ago this year that was the most intense acting that i've ever done because it was so raw and it was so this not so much intense as it was i really had to disassociate myself from the character because i am can we swear on here yeah Okay, good. Fuck it, then. I wish I'd have known that. I, I, you know, if you talk to my ex-wives, they'll say he's an asshole, but I'm not that much of a fucking evil prick. Um, Yeah, kill me. Yeah, well, spoiler. Um, So, um, yeah, allegedly. Um, And, you know, there might be some ex- girlfriends out there that 
accused me of stalking them at one time or another, but um, never to anything to this level. This is this is totally outside of my own psychology. Something well, that I just had to do. You recently had a stretch. Do really you know the history of stretch. of the? Um, do you know the history of of? The story. The, the story? Yeah, the story of, yes. of the actual stock. We do, and we, and we know mm -hmm. that the words were, a lot of our words in Have the you actually were spoken. How much How much of the of the saved three terabytes of material between me and Philly that we have, <laughs> I would say at least a terabyte of material mm -hmm. uh, that he sent to Tressa. Yeah, Tressa shared a lot of that with okay. me. Um, not just his own I bet I got videos, a full terabyte. Uh, I bet I got a full terabyte of material. Yeah, just a really, I don't creep out easily, but that creeped me out. To my understanding, I, this is about ninety percent of what sure. actually happened. Just mm -hmm. names are changed, and, and yeah. you're an actress. Ninety percent of she's a writer. Uh, mm -hmm. You're a singer. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And she's a movie maker. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And I found the best people. I found Mike, who's, who I've been working with for a dozen years, and uh, been in several movies with him, done several projects with him. And I found, and Gary has been teaching acting. He is so good. Um, and staging, he has his own theater company. And I found Ashley, and she, even though I'm doing the editing, edit, she is great with You're going to have to get better with Gary. In <laughs> you know that, right? Than I am. <laughs> and I've got you who does all the radio work and all the promotions and stuff like that. I just found the best people and it, it and and it all came together at the same time and it had to because we had a date where everybody had to have the same, be mm -hmm. on the same page at the same time on the same day. And it worked. We're a hell of a team. Yeah. 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 Okay, so can, can we come back and do something else, Mom? Yeah, that's the next one, Chris. <laughs> well, we will be doing more soon. That's, that's up to the other mom. <laughs> can, can we do a comedy, maybe? Uh, has anything funny ever happened to you? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. You made Sam. Tress is the biggest thing serial there. killer I know. The, <laughs> the funniest thing. More people. Gary, the funniest thing about Tressa is her Snapchat filters. Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And the videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you trumping? <laughs> you trumping, are you? <laughs> Sam? <laughs> Sam? <laughs> That's good about me and him. We can go back and forth on that. And we get along as far as that goes. That's the way I get through the Trump stuff is having to make it a joke. Mm -hmm. But that's about the only joke I am in. Because my, my writing is serious. It always yeah. is... Uh, it's a little it's dark. dark. It's yes. a little dark. <laughs> a, dark. Little dark. Yeah. a little dark. A little dark. And borders uh, your fiction borders on true crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I always wanted to do. I wanted to go to true mm -hmm. crime, and I never knew my first true crime novel would be my own. Mm, your own, yeah. yeah. You know, and that just freaked me out. Yeah. And I can't do the true crime novel until my court trial is over. Yeah. Um, right. You know, so yeah. that's why um, I did the mm -hmm. stalking monster and all that. Mm -hmm. So, which turned out to be something bigger than what I thought it would be. I wrote it for mm -hmm. therapy, basically. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into something else. So. This so. isn't a spoiler alert, but just about anything Tressa does, somebody's fixing to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and 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 another non-spoiler is you don't know how many people when Tressa <laughs> writes something, 
You don't know how many people are going to die, who, how many people are living. With Tressa's writing, you don't know if there is a single person living. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. right. And are they really dead? Yeah. <laughs> are they really dead? I like it because I've had people say that they thought the story was going to go one way, and then it just turns and goes a totally different direction. And that's what I like to do is keep them on the edge of their seats. I've got a question for, for Tressa and for Ashley because you had mentioned this a little bit earlier and it really seemed, and I heard you talking about it a little bit, that doing this, performing this, writing this today was somewhat cathartic and therapeutic. Yes. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, people write what they are scared of. Mm -hmm. And that's what was so bad about this. And when there were two scenes in it where I actually broke down, mm -hmm. you know, because it hit home a lot, you know. But it was okay because it's kind of a therapy, I guess. I have to admit, there were times where, like, I I was crying, but like I could see you crying, and I was like <laughs> trying not to cry. <laughs> yeah. It's not like if you cry, she's gonna cry. Yeah. It was kind of like a wrecking ball, just like a yeah. catastrophic, you know, yeah. downfall. But that it was what was needed too, you know. Yeah. So that I didn't think I would be as emotional. I knew there would be some emotions, but I never knew I would. I didn't want to break mm -hmm. down in front of everybody. Yeah. Remember, but, I told you, I knew you were going to break down. You said you knew it. Yeah. I really thought Mike was going to be the one bawling the most. Uh, <laughs> I really did. I was tearing up a little bit under the mask when we were... I kind of thought so. Mm -hmm. I, I could tell both of you were uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This is very, very dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, wrecking ball. Like she said, mm -hmm. yeah, like you said. But ultimately, it's a it it, it, well, it can bring hope to the audiences out yes. there too. The um, as a cautionary right. tale, not just yeah. not just I mean, not just this particular psychopath um, or stalking monster, whatever you want to say. There's <laughs> two different descriptions uh, mm -hmm. that people do know about, but um, I had a thought, but then I lost it. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not just this particular one, but mm -hmm. a lot of them are truly dark. And, yeah. uh, a lot of people watch these things and think they are fantasy, but, mm -hmm. um, this one, it's <laughs> not really going to be fantasy so much. It's, no. it's, it's, it's based on a lot of true stuff, so. When you can watch something and see yourself in it, in a situation as incredibly dark as what Ashley's character was in, and see the end result of what happens, I think, hopefully, please God, some of these people that are in situations like that, it will finally get to their, get, get into their cerebellum to go, oh shit, I gotta get out of this. And... I've got to call somebody for my friend who mm -hmm. says she's scared. Mm -hmm. i got to get the police out there now. Mm -hmm. And one thing about that people don't know, when you have a stalker or anything, you call and you make that police report because when mm -hmm. the police come out, they have to give you a report. And yeah. a lot of times they'll tell you that they're not gonna give you a report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You make, if you've gotta make 50 reports in one week, you make 50 reports in one week. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. do what you have to do, and then that's how you get the attention. That's why I got the FBI involved mm -hmm. in my case and stuff. I would go down there and sit and talk to them, you know? And it's, you have to be strong okay. and yeah. I feel like I feel like you really did capture the mind of a sociopath, you know, when somebody is that extremely narcissistic and sociopathic, mm -hmm. they, they come, they, they, they get off on tearing you down and mm -hmm. degrading you and belittling you and you just you capture the oh, yeah. essence of what, you know, you're trying to explain mm -hmm. of what these men are doing to women and what these women are doing to men even because mm -hmm. there is such thing as, you know, spousal abuse and yeah. men being, yeah. the other, mm -hmm. on the other hand, and it's just like, 
that you, a lot of people don't realize that all of this is happening. So you, you really captured it to a T. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, and you know, it's, it's to bring awareness. I want people to know what can happen, but I also mm -hmm. want them, because when this happened to me, I found a lot of people who literally committed suicide sure from yeah. this and, and it really hurt me and to you found, see and you also found a lot of people that dropped you like a bad habit too oh yeah, yeah. especially you know when you when yes. you get that when you needed to support to be there for right yourself. no one was there you know yeah i had very few people everyone treated me like i was the bad guy yep. and they just didn't yep. want to have anything to do with me yep. you know so yeah, so to get the bullying out there, people, mm -hmm. suicide, because whenever you think suicide is the only way out, that's when you need help. Mm -hmm. And I was at that point, you know, yeah. I, I was, I was, I well, was put yeah. in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You were at, you were at was, volume and whiskey. I was doing <laughs> volume, sleeping pills, alcohol, I had mm -hmm. my nine. I was so scared for my family. I literally thought that that was my only way out. Yeah. Well, it comes down to hope, and and the narcissistic sociopaths steal that hope. Yeah, they do. They, they, they take everything. They take your career. They take, you know, your dreams. Your your friends, dreams. Your they life. they violate you in every way possible. Yes, and. and Rip you of that hope and one of the yeah. worst things a worst violation is when they accuse you of doing something that they're doing to you mm -hmm. yes. Yes. transfer oh yeah transfer yes. you made me do this to you yes. i wouldn't have hit you if you wouldn't have right yeah. if you would have just done the laundry no why are you stalking me and my family yeah. Right. Mm. Why are you doing that? I'm not stalking Nobody you. I'm just driving I'm by your house you? and finding yes. your address on my own. That's right. That's what we do for fun. Mm. That's yeah. right. And but, social media now has made this so much more common and so much more yeah. easy. Lampooning is fun. Agree. Well, there is hope. And yeah. guess what? This is a story of redemption because yeah. yeah. your three projects in mm -hmm. Teresa Grave, Tressa Graves Productions yep. mm -hmm. and, and more to come. And more to come. So, Ain't nothing going to break her strikes. Not yeah. anymore. I love that song. <laughs> Nobody's going to slow me down. Oh, no. <laughs> You got, got to, to keep, keep on moving. moving. <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. I'm going and I won't touch ground. Oh no. Edit. Right. <laughs> no, I actually like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not coming. This evening. But I want to thank everyone thank for thank being you. there for me, for coming here and doing this. You know, mm -hmm. you guys were. I don't even have words to say for all of y'all because you really do a lot of work. And I appreciate mm -hmm. all of you and thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your bravery. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you're going, you're still going through enough of your own, uh, uh, shit. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> knee deep in shit and I'm just getting it thrown at me more. <laughs> That's what I always say. But, mm -hmm. you know, like I, like I said, along the way, you know, with cutting those old ties and with, you know, mm -hmm. having, being dropped by many others, um, you, you learn who your crew is and you find your people and mm -hmm. it may not be what you expected, but it becomes like a family yeah. later on anyway. So really you're just gaining more. Can we be your people? I hope so. <laughs> I, I already thought you were. Girlfriend. <laughs> I love Irish little wee lads. I'm a leprechaun. <laughs> All right, I think we have enough for that. I do. <laughs> That's a pretty good wrap there. Thank you. Thank you, Tressa. Oh, you're welcome. Love thank you. you guys. Love you guys. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for the Dark Hours Thank podcast. you, Stephen. Thank yep. You. We'll be back soon. Hi, Tressa Graves here. You can go over to my website at www.tressagraves.com and watch Sociopath for free. Mm -hmm.